Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Doing some higher end door hardware installation. This has become a standard for me uh, on a lot of the homes I do. On pocket doors, we use this deeply recessed mortise hardware. Requires a special machine. It can be very intimidating if you haven't done this before. If you screw it up, you screw up the door. And if you screw it up, you might not find out that you screwed it up until you're installing hardware on the final. So I wanted to make this video, show you how to do this, the tools you need, some of the things you want to avoid, and some tips to make you more productive along the way. Real quick, let's go over some of the tools and hardware you're gonna want for this install. First off, as you see here, I've got my door buck. You're gonna want to have the doors securely in the vertical position in order to mount our mortising machine on it here. Now this is a Porter Cable 513 lock mortiser. Pretty much the industry standard, if you're gonna wanna get into uh, higher end hardware, this is probably gonna be the machine that you want. Now I'm gonna list all of the tools here on the side of the screen that you want for this kit. Um, I find it's best uh, to create kits around the tools uh, the, the installs that I'm doing. So a lot of these I keep together all the time and then whenever I start a new house, I've got everything together. But obviously some of these things like a drill and a blower, jigsaw, I pull out each time I need it. So just going across here, some of the basic stuff. Blower, you'll see why we need that in a few seconds. It gets very, very dusty. Safety glasses also are crucial. Jigsaw, drill with spade bit, two different routers. One is gonna be just a cordless router with a, a oversized guide bushing. You'll see that in a little bit as well. And then a half inch um, upcut bit with a 5 8 guide bushing. Those are gonna be used with our Templico template here. If you're getting into this MTech hardware, which we have over here, I highly suggest that you buy a Templico template. They're expensive at first, but they pay dividends if you're gonna do much of this hardware. Really makes the process go a lot more smoothly and it's very accurate also. One other key point, um, whenever you're gonna be having this mortised hardware, try to get the hardware on site when you're gonna be doing your trim install. Now, I've been doing so much of this that I actually just purchased my own set of the MTech Modern Hardware. That way I have it all the time. Um, so, and the key thing that I want with that is to be able to get the thicknesses of the hardware and just make sure everything is working good all the time. If you don't have the hardware, you can use the, uh, the sketch that comes, you can get this off the internet or it comes in the door hardware box. I've saved one or two of these in my kit, but it's a little more risky, uh, a little bit more reassuring to be able to set your routers up to the proper depth if you've got your hardware in hand. Now in terms of the overall setup, it's nice to do all of this in one area. Reason being, it's gonna get very messy number one, and number two, you do have a lot of different tools that you're using, so if we can keep our work area confined to one space, it's gonna be more efficient. As you see here, I have two doors that are an inch and three eighths thick. These are going upstairs, but then over here I've got seven doors that are gonna be a full inch and three quarter thick. These are eight foot doors. They will be going uh, on the main level. I did have to, prep all of these doors in advance. You'll see we've got raw wood on the edge here. These doors come beveled, so I ripped that bevel off with a track saw, sanded them, and got them prepped and ready to be mortised now. A door buck is really critical for this install. I can't tell you how many times though I've actually forgot this and I've got to the job site and realized I didn't have it. Very easy just to make one up on site with some scrap material. This one, I try and keep around. It's set up for inch and three quarter doors, so it's a little bit wider than an inch and three quarter space here. Obviously here, if you look on the gap on the side, this is an inch and three eighths door. I still just go ahead and use it. I'll just take some um, shims and kind of put them in the side 
and that locks the door in place securely. So it works for both inch and three eighths and inch and three quarter doors. To start this whole process, we'll be putting the mortiser on the door. This is a big heavy machine. It clamps onto the door using these crank clamps like so. So the first thing that we gotta do is figure out the height that we want to make our mortise. I do this enough that I know uh, I actually just write the height to the top of my mortiser on the top of the machine. So every time I know exactly where to put it. So I know for me, 43 and a half inches to the top of this, I've made a mark at 43 and a half inches from the bottom of the door. I've also made a mark in the center of the door right here. So then we'll just go on here and this just cranks and clamps right on to the edge of the door like so. And it really holds itself in place pretty well. Now you'll notice right here, I've got a center mark on my mortiser. I also mark the center of the door right there. The reason is whenever you put this in place, it's easy to get, at least for mine, it's easy to get it off center. So you notice here, the marks are off a solid 16th of an inch. If I leave this here, my mortise will be off a 16th. And so I have found that if I hold it in place in the center where my two marks are lined up and then clamp it down, it'll be perfect. But that's something you wanna watch out for because if you don't and you just slap this thing on, it's off center quite a bit. I've also found that I do need to pay attention to the bottom as well. I'd be curious for you guys that do this a lot and have your own machines if yours have some slop in them. Uh, I don't know if that's normal or not, but mine definitely does. And it's something I have to watch out for to make sure it's lining up on center. Once we've got our mortiser clamped on here, we're basically ready to go. This is an intimidating machine. You turn it on and it really rumbles. It's got a super long spindle. It's kind of a violent machine, so just be prepared for that. Uh, once it's on, we'll crank up and down, and as you can see, it raises and lowers and goes in at the same time. So it's just a matter of cranking and cranking until we're all the way in. We have a stop down here, and you'll notice as we're mortising, this stop will go further and further in, and I know I'm at full depth whenever I make contact over here. I'm not gonna get into the full setup of this machine in this video. I'm just gonna show kind of the overall process uh, in regards to this. You will notice I've got a blower in my hand. This thing shoots a ton of sawdust out at you. Make sure you've got your safety glasses on, otherwise you'll end, with your, end up with your eyes full of junk. I have found that if I point a blower like this down at the same time, it just kind of directs everything away from me and keeps a lot more of the sawdust off of me. Also, make sure you get your hearing protection in because this is a really loud machine. Okay, time to rock and roll. This lever down here engages the machine so that it goes in. Turn it on. I do recommend unplugging it once you're done, just so you don't accidentally hit this toggle switch and turn it on when you're moving it around. And then this uh, little lever down here, we're gonna turn and that disengages it so that it can be pulled out. Whenever this lever is engaged, you can't pull it back. So moving that over allows us to pull it out and then just real quick, loosen our clamps and pull it off. Now, as you can see, guys, we've got one large deep mortise. That was basically step one of the operation. But we want to get to this point where we've also mortised here for our plate across the front, as well as our through mortise through the door so that our hardware can go in there. That is where we want to use this Templico template. It's going to slide right over the door and allow us to do that. 
So what I do at this point is we need to get the height position on here. It, there is a decent sized space, so I find what works best. What I find works best is to just cut a block about 5 8 thick of one by. I'm gonna make a pencil mark across the top, and it makes it just a little bit easier to center the template because I'm lining this block up with the top and bottom edge of my mortise. So now I've got two lines there that are offset. And then whenever I go to install this template, I can see my pencil lines here and I make those equidistant and get it centered on here. I find that these Craig Automax clamps work pretty good for clamping it in place. Just lock it down there, one on the bottom and then one on top as well. One quick note, this is a problem that I encounter fairly often and it's that the mortise is not quite centered exactly after I do this whole operation. That's why I was really trying to get it perfect. Um, for some reason it still didn't center quite right. But on the MTEC literature, they recommend a 11 16 wide mortise right here. Now the cutter that I have on mine is actually three quarter. So it's oversized by a 16th of an inch. I find that's really helpful because if it gives you a little bit of extra space in case that mortise is off, it doesn't cause the hardware to malfunction. At this point, we're ready to route our mortise for our plate here. Doesn't really matter. You can do your through mortise first or this plate makes no difference. But our goal is to be able to put this in and have everything come out nice and flush. I actually have this upside down. That doesn't help anything. But we want to get this so that it finishes out with our plate just being slightly past flush with the edge of the door. So that's the next step of this operation. We're clamped on here. What I have found, there's two different options that you have for bits. This template is, is set up to be used with a half inch cutter and a 5 8 guide bushing. So here, I've got this router set up with a 5 8 guide bushing and a half inch mortising bit. You can do that, no big deal. There's one problem with that. If your guide bushing is not perfectly centered on your router bit, it throws everything off. And what you absolutely don't wanna do is be turning the router as you go around because that would actually make the, the mortise wider than it should be. So what I actually prefer to do is take the struggle out of the whole thing. And I use these uh, white side bits. And what they do is they've got a guide bearing on it that is 5 8 which is matching to what our typical 5 8 guide bushing would be and then it's got a half inch cutter head. So this is an awesome bit. I've got a bunch of these laying around. I use them all the time and they're perfect for this kind of situation. The only thing is you just wanna be a little bit more careful with it because you don't have as much protection over the bit as you do with a guide bushing like this. So you wanna make sure you're not pulling the router out or putting it in with the bit spinning because that might gouge the side of your template. So again, to start out, we wanna make sure our bit is inside the mortise before we turn the router on. Our next step is gonna to be to route out this through plate section on both sides. There's a lot of different ways you can do this. You could actually even uh, pencil this out, cut it out with a, the whole thing with the jigsaw. I like to have that clean, crisp, routered look that looks really professional. So I hog out most of it, and then I finish it up with the router. I've made the mistake in the past of getting way too greedy with the router, and just what I, basically what I did was I would drill a hole, stick the router in, and then go around. The problem is you end up with that big piece floating around in there 
the router grabs a hold of it and it just completely destroys your guide bushing and the bit and it's a disaster. Um, so you don't wanna do that. What I've found um, seems to work pretty good for me is I just take an inch and a half spade bit, I drill two holes, top and bottom, connect the sides with the jigsaw, which removes most of the material, and then I hog out the rest with the router. Okay, so we're all done with our Templico template now. I've got one more trick I'm gonna show you with this template that just makes it even more handy in a second. But I wanted to just sum up a couple things with the routers. It's best to have two routers set up for this task, obviously. Uh, just takes a small compact router to do the plate on the front here. I do kind of like having a larger router to hog out the, the material over here. It's just got plenty of power and it's easy to use. Could probably use a compact router if I wanted to, but I've got this laying around anyways. One thing I didn't touch on was how to set your depth on your router here for this plate. I will say I normally always bring my plunge router that go my plunge base that goes with this router makes it so much easier for setting the correct depth for your plates like this. Uh, didn't have it today and I remembered how much of a pain it is to set depth without a plunge base. So unfortunately I don't have it so I can't show you how to do that, but I do recommend a plunge base for your compact router. I mentioned earlier that it's worth the money to purchase the Templico template for these mortises. I'm gonna show you one of the key reasons for that and one of the things I love about this template. Here on this house, I've got both inch and three quarter and inch and three eighths thick doors. That means you've got to move your template uh, and adjust for those different thicknesses. Sure, you could have two different templates. That would be fine, but it's just more space. Um, let me show you how to adjust this. It's really cool how you do it. So with this template, it's adjustable. As you can see here, the sides go in and out and you tighten it down with just Phillips screws on the side. But it's really cool. What they've done is they've routed a mortise on the inside of the template. And this one here is an inch and three eighths wide. And this one here is an inch and three quarters wide. So whenever you're setting up for inch and three quarter doors, you're just gonna line up the inside edge of your template with that edge there, and then the edge right here. When you want to move to inch and three eighths doors, you'll move them in 
So they're like so. So really cool way to quickly center your sides and get everything aligned. Just a really impressive template overall. Okay, everything is done. There's one more tiny detail that I like to do. We've obviously got rounded corners uh, on our mortise here. It's nice to get those squared off at this point. That way, whenever they paint them, all the edges get painted. If you wait to square the corners off until after paint, you have raw wood then and it doesn't look nearly as nice. So you could use a chisel to do this. I've got one of these little corner chisel tools. Works pretty well. It's got a plunge on it. I'm sure a lot of you have seen these before. You just kind of got to get it firmly positioned in place. And it goes right into the corner and it'll square things off pretty well. So again, just hold it firmly in place. Square it up. Looks good. So that removes almost all of the material as well. Um, very quick way to square off those corners. That's a general overview of this whole process to get to this point. I've got nine pocket doors on this house, so I've got a whole stack over here that I've got to do yet. But we also need to show you how to do the latch plate. Once we get these mortised, we'll go ahead and install these pocket doors and we'll need to mortise this latch plate into the jam on the door. I'll show you that in just a second here. For now, I'm gonna keep plugging away. I've got this whole pile of doors yet to do, a lot of sawdust yet to make. So hopefully this is helping you guys out. I'm gonna keep plugging along. All right, guys, so we just got done mortising all of our doors previously. We're actually about a week into the future now, so it's time to uh, go ahead and put our lock plate or our strike plate into the jam. As you can see, we've already cased these openings, we've got the pocket doors installed, so this is the next step in the process. You wanna make sure on all of your privacy doors you install this plate. Our first step in this whole process of mortising the strike plate is gonna be able to, gonna be to locate where the plate goes on the jam. Now if you come around here, I've got this plate here which goes on our larger mortise assembly on the door. This strike plate needs to align so that whenever the lock comes out, it goes perfectly into place with our strike plate. These are very uh, sensitive in terms of you do need to get them lined up properly and correctly. Now, I have learned over the years that I've been installing these that you want to just go with the measurements that are on MTEX drawing. This comes with every lock set that you buy, and it's a very simple, easy to understand uh, diagram as far as where to put this. So basically, We've got this plate here. Our second plate, according to the diagram, just goes 1 8 of an inch lower than the top of this plate. So all we've got to do is transfer the line from the top of this mortise over to the jam, and then we'll drop this one down an eighth of an inch, and that'll be the height that this plate gets mortised in. Now to do this, I very carefully want to take my square and my pencil and just transfer a line around the side of the door so that I can close it and mark on the jam. So what I'll do now, we'll just roll this closed and very simply, I'm gonna mark the line for the top of my mortise right here. Now we do need to measure an eighth of an inch down um, for our height. So I'm just gonna put my tape up here, very carefully mark across an eighth inch. Now the other thing that I like to do to center the door, I'll close it like this, I'll push it against it so it's all the way on this side. I'll mark down like so on this side. Now I'll go around to the other side and do the same process. So I've got two lines here and to find the center of my strike plate, all I do is I measure that and then mark the center. So I've got an inch and an eighth strong here. So I'm gonna go about nine sixteenths strong. And that is the center of my strike plate. 
we'll make a whoopsie and we'll just go ahead and make a line straight up through the center of this. Next for our height, we'll square off our lower line here, which was an eighth of an inch lower. So go ahead, get my pencil lead lined up really nicely with that. And now I'll go right here. I'll put my plate up here and then I'm just gonna mark the bottom of it across here like so. Now this is the strike template that comes with the M-Tech pocket door template kit. So you already watched me use the other part of this kit to do all of these mortises. You also have this piece here, which you can put in place, nail it onto the jam and route. Works really well. I'd highly recommend again, getting this template. First step in doing this, this is a two piece template. So I want to remove this white piece on here cause we don't need that installed right now. Go ahead and pop that out. Use a screwdriver the Phillips bit. Now to position this in place, I have already with this template, I marked uh, with my pencil the center on the bottom and on the top, you can see here on the back side of the template. So I can align these marks with the center line here. And then I'm just gonna use my eye to split the difference between my top and bottom line here. Keep in mind, this template is designed to be used with a half inch mortising bit and a 5 8 guide bushing. So this is going to be an eighth of an inch larger than your actual plate because it's designed to be used with that bushing. But it's really easy, just sight with your eye. So you'll have a 16th above and below your lines. Get that centered and lined up. Take your hammer, give it a little tap, tap, tappy. And now we're ready to route. One thing I like to do before I start drilling holes and stuff, take a strike plate, stick it in there, and then I like to mark where the actual screw holes go. And the reason I'm doing that is because I don't want to accidentally remove too much material to where it goes where into where that screw hole area is. I've done it too many times. Then I go to install the hardware on the final and I've actually hogged out too much material. So that is why I'm doing that. At this point, I'm also I'm gonna take my uh, white piece here. I'm gonna put it back in and I'm gonna mark the bottom and the top here. This is designed to um, mortise the larger, deeper mortise, not the larger mortise, but the deeper mortise. If you want to use a longer bit and hog that out, you can do that. I prefer to just use a, a half inch Forstner bit and do it that way. You will notice here, so I, I marked the top and bottom of this larger mortise right here. Now the reason uh, that I marked the screw holes also, you'll notice on the bottom here how close that is to the screw hole. In the past, I've gotten too close to that screw hole. So I wanna make sure I stay up far enough, but there is plenty of space here. I don't need to go all the way down into this area. You'll notice that uh, a couple of things. First off on my template here, I've drawn an arrow pointing up. That indicates to me that I always put this in the same direction, pointed up. You'll also see there's an arrow sticker on this piece that always needs to be oriented up. This is not symmetrical. You'll notice that the space here is actually lower. Our strike plate is symmetrical. So why is that that this is off? The reason is our locking mechanism, as you can see, it's gonna go down whenever it latches and it's gonna be much lower. So we actually need to hog out more material on the lower side of the mortise so that this has somewhere to go. So you'll see here the lower port of the, the lower portion of the locking mechanism is almost to the top of our screw hole here. And that's why we want to be really precise whenever we do our deep mortise uh, and not get into this area. But we also have to make sure we come down low enough. So I've learned, I tried this back whenever I first bought this kit with a, two routers and I had a larger router that would do this piece to go in deeper. Found I didn't really care for that. What I like to do is use a half inch Forstner bit so at this point right now, I'll just take my Forstner bit 
and I'll center it in here on my pencil line and just drill this out. Now you'll see we've obviously got a bunch of jagged holes here. Just take a sharp chisel and it's very easy just to flatten out that mortise. I didn't quite do my holes perfectly. Uh, ideally you like to have this connected, but still will be pretty easy to get that all out of there. So here we've, we've accomplished the same thing that a large uh, half inch spiral bit on the router would have done, but it, to me it's just a lot easier forcing her bit in a chisel and it only takes a minute or so. Okay, we're moving right along. Next part is gonna be to mortise our actual depth for the strike plate here. Cordless router works great. Plunge base really makes it a lot easier to get your depth set exactly right. Unfortunately, I forgot to bring my plunge base for this, so we're gonna do it the old fashioned way with this router. Um, I've got my bit on here. All I did was I took the, uh, the piece of hardware here, the strike plate, I set it in place, and then I just adjusted the router bit depth until it barely touched the wood on here. So you will notice this bit, this is the uh, offset bit. So I've got a half inch mortising bit here and a 5 8 inch bearing. I mentioned this previously. This is a fantastic combination for using with templates like this. So now it's time to route. We wanna, whenever using a template like this, we wanna make sure we're starting our bit in the template. That way we don't accidentally damage our template. This is the first one I've did, and I can already tell just by looking at this, I don't think that I have my mortise deep enough. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm actually gonna set this a little bit deeper. Again, uh, having a plunge base makes it a lot easier to get your depth just perfect. So I'm gonna go a little deeper here. Okay, that looks a little bit better. Okay, we're routed, so I'm gonna pop this off. So now if we get in close here, you'll see my pencil lines all around. Um, we got our height, that looks really nice. We're offset 1 8 of an inch down from the top of my other plate, which is on the door. And uh, this all looks good. So now I just need to square off these corners and we'll see how the fit is. I've got my, my corners uh, squared off. You can use one of those corner chisel punch tools. Also, just a regular sharp chisel works well. Also, you wanna try and be as precise as possible with this. So, got the plate here. You can see it doesn't quite wanna go in. Couple taps, and that looks really good. Ideally, you want to have it just sitting proud of the face, I mean, just a tiny, tiny bit. But that looks good. We've got meat down here for this screw, that's good. So that's, that's it, that's all there is to it.
Okay, just to show you what the installation looks like on this, again, MTech Modern Hardware. I realize a lot of you guys may be installing this and not actually have the hardware on site. If that's the case, you can use the instructions, uh, the diagram that comes with it. I actually purchased this to have with my mortising kit. That way I al always have the exact thickness of the plates and stuff. Makes it a little bit easier to set the router uh, and just confirm that my depth is correct. To me, it was worth making that investment and just having an extra set of hardware on hand. So if we come in closer here, you'll see as we turn the lock, this pops down. Go ahead and test our fit over here. So everything locks really well, lines up just exactly as it should. So hope you guys have found this video helpful. Uh, this kind of hardware can be a little bit intimidating if you haven't done it before, uh, but hopefully this video helps you get through it and uh, maybe learn it a little bit easier. So hit that thumbs up. We'll see you on the next video. Don't forget to subscribe and do all that stuff. Drop a comment for me, helps out with the algorithm and uh, we'll see you on the next video.